morning prayer in the service of the Lord's Day, sixth Sunday after Epiphany, the 12th of February, 2023. Community Church of Syosset. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. Jesus said, Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, Do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your own head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this, comes from the evil one. God holds us in life. Amen. Amen.
after those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. I will praise you with an upright heart. Let us worship God. My friends, the light comes not to sear and blind us, but to save us. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. In his name, I declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
George, not time to go down yet, I'm afraid. If, uh, not afraid, but happy. Uh, we're, now we're celebrating the leaders uh, that are continuing in service and that have been elected to our, uh, elected to our congregation. For those who are present, um, if I could ask everyone to please come forward. So that's George and Ginny are here, Diane and Robert. If you could come up, Lara and Michael. Um, George Pratt is here. And we have also Lauren um, and Jack, Jack Waslin and Gordon Barr. So if everyone could come up. It's most of the congregation, which is a good sign, isn't it? When, the, when most of the congregation is taking their turn in service, which is beautiful, which is beautiful. So I hope everybody has a top one of these. Did everybody get one? Okay, good, good, good. So please follow along as we celebrate our leadership together. I know it's formal, right? But sometimes in the formality of things, uh, the words can inspire us, okay, and teach us. So uh, let us uh, engage in this so that we may better support one another. To the glory, to God be the glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Our local church commissioning of a lay member is an act whereby the local church of the United Church of Christ recognizes the diverse gifts of its members. We celebrate the particular ministry of persons in the life of the congregation and in various settings in the world that God loves. We greet all who are gathered this day in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and the one who calls us to the priesthood of all believers. Now, there are a variety of gifts. But the same Spirit gives them, and there are a variety of services which the same. And there are varieties of activities. But it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. With wisdom, knowledge, faith, and healing. These leaders, called by name, have followed God's call in accordance with the faith and order of this church to provide leadership among us. They have accepted their respective responsibilities and are before us in witness to their willingness to serve. Friends, do you believe in your heart that God, excuse me, friends, do you believe in your heart that God has called you to serve the Community Church of Syosset in your elected role and duties? We do. We do. Are you willing to take on these new responsibilities in service to the living Christ? We are willing. Will you seek to witness in word and example to those around you the good news of Jesus, that there is reconciliation with God, forgiveness of sins, and power for peace and justice among those living the love of God? We, we will with the help of God. Will you maintain participation and communication with the members of this local church that all may be strengthened by the service to which you are committed? We, we will with the help of God. We have heard your commitment, and we thank God for your generous response to this call to service. Through the beckoning of the Holy Spirit and the commissioning of the church, Servants of Christ are both gathered and sent out into the world. We accept your service in the community church in Syosset, and we pledge our support and prayers that your work may be faithful and effective. In the name of Christ Jesus, we commission you to this service. May God bless you and make you a blessing. Let us pray. Eternal God, send your spirit among us that we may truly be the church. Grant sustenance and wisdom to your servants. Jimmy, Diane, Robert, George, George, and Jack. 
that they may embrace the opportunities and responsibilities of commissioned ministry in Christ's name and for your glory. Help them to be Even in times of difficulty, help them go forth with a real sense of joy and encouragement. Friends, we have heard the promises of our kindred in Christ. We have prayed together to uphold and strengthen their resolve for the work before them. We celebrate our household faith and lift up the many tasks needed to provide care and reward for all those who worship for the seven years. May God prosper this church in the mission placed before it, including through the work of Gordon, Bill, Laura, Lauren, Lara, Ginny, Diane, Robert, George, George, and Jack, commissioned to serve in their elected roles. I now declare them to be commissioned members of this community of faith, the Community Church of Syosset. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, I thank you so much. It was right there. Well, I know who's going yeah. to appreciate this. Where is Michael? Yeah. Here he is. Michael, the guitar pick. Wow. <laughs> Marin found it. <laughs> Wonderful. turn to our study lesson this morning from the Gospel according to Matthew from the fifth chapter, uh, a portion of which we have already read this morning in the opening sentences of the service. Listen to the word of God. You have heard it said, excuse me, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and but I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the fire of hell. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister. And then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with them. Or your accuser will may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard. And you will be thrown into prison. I tell you, truly, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. May God bless this reading of Holy Scripture to our understanding. Now, if I might invite uh, Michael to introduce Ina, our wonderful uh, 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 soloist this morning. Oh, Michael, you have it? Ina de la Merced uh, is a senior high school, and she's a current member of the uh, Children's Orchestra Society, which has served in many uh, positions, such as a concertmaster of the uh, Elysian Ensemble and assistant concertmaster of the Young Symphonic Ensemble. And um, she is uh, a very talented young girl and a little bit shy, <laughs> but her music will speak for what her real heart is. Uh, and uh, so let us welcome Ina to the podium. Okay. <laughs> this, uh, this piece is composed by one of our faculty members, who is Ina's uh, mentor and teacher, and Maestro Timothy Tim Cho.
you so very, very much. Thank you. Before you go down, just want to say a word. First of all, thanks. And we have heard today how people may be instruments of God in this world. And I want to give you the assurance. You know, you played the song, Blessed Assurance. I want to give you the assurance that you have been an instrument of God to us today because your music is transcendent. You have brought us closer to God. And so we bless you for your ministry. And thank you for it. And thank you, Michael, and the Children's Orchestra Society for bringing Ada to us this morning. We just so love, love their participation in our sports. So, I have a question uh, for folks today. Imagine somebody were to say to you, call you out, and say, you fool. Now hear it with some acid, you fool. Can you imagine how that would sting your heart? Think of it for a moment. Now Jesus preaches directly against that. I can remember two occasions, and when I was reading the scripture for the Sunday, they immediately came to mind, okay? Uh, the first one was I was sitting in a dental chair, and at the time I used to be a cigarette smoker, and he said, the, the smoke is ruining the health of your mouth. You're a fool. Actually, he said something before fool. Uh, <laughs> you're a fool. And I listened to him. Do you think I quit smoking because of it? No. Do I remember it? Yep. And that was said with the most kindly of hearts, right? with a person who really cared about me and wanted me to be well and healthy, you know? But it was a challenge that I couldn't hear. That's for sure. Second time I heard someone call me a fool. It was when I decided to reorganize my career and go into ministry. And they said, what are you, a fool? <laughs> what a fool this I don't remember exact words, but I know fool was in the mix. Oh, boy, did that sting. And in the case of that person, I mean, did, maybe they were right. Perhaps I could have made more money doing something else or had better standing in the world had I, you know, pursued a different route. But, well, as you can tell, did it change my direction in life? Did not. Now I want to, us to think for a moment because we live in an age of confrontation and acrimony, don't we? And if you were to look on Facebook, you would find that that comment is reinforced substantially. How many times, whether they use the word fool or not, do we see other people calling each other fools? Uh, all the time, right? Now let me ask a question. Think about it for a second. Do you think that being called a fool has changed anybody's mind or behavior on the internet? In your own personal life? Said kindly or not kindly? Does it work? For us, following Jesus, the standard that we need to have, I believe, is first of all, personal example. Is there anyone here, raise your hand if you're brave enough and you think this much of yourself, who could say that there's no area or facet of your life in which you could be called foolish? There's nothing there. No foolishness in you. Anybody? Nobody's willing to admit, right? just as well. All of us want to be careful before casting the first stone, right? 
for calling somebody else a fool or not. But sometimes it becomes really, really hard. The other day I was at the at the pool and you know some of the some of the guys in the locker rooms you know get into their uh, pol particular political perspectives. Have you ever heard overheard this in the course of days that I, I was sitting right there and somebody was saying something that really got my goat. Okay, they were saying Muslims with acid tone, blaming them for the 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 the. the terribleness in the world of some sort. Oh my gosh, did I want to stand up and say, you're wrong! <laughs> it's foolishness! No. I did say the words. You know, I, I, I hope Christians aren't judged by that same standard. Uh, because guess what? Uh, people are people. And it's never fair to judge the worst of any group by the best or even the ordinary of the group that we're in, is it? And you go, ah, what do you mean? Well, Muslims are just as diverse as anybody. Three major denominations, two smaller ones, hundreds of sects. You can hear sermons from one mosque to another most of which are preaching peace and prosperity and justice and fairness in the world, and a few that aren't, and nefarious, and wrong, and out in the mainstream. But it was chilling to me to hear that. And my, I'm old enough that people spoke racially in the same way quite openly when I was a child, calling out people of, not people of different races, calling out different races with particular bad qualities to them, right? We've all heard this. We've all heard swearing along those lines. I'm wondering, do you think any of that has ever done any good to anybody in the world? But I have thought about what did do good. When I was growing up in the United Methodist Church in Huntington, as you know, the churches were, especially in the 60s, pretty segregated places, right? right? They're mostly all white or all, uh, all people of a, of a particular ethnic group, black or otherwise. At that church, there were two families, African-American families, that decided that they were going to be a part of Huntington United Methodist Church. And they made it a point. And I think this was out of the out of the so out of the uh, you know the, the whole social justice movement of the time in the 60s. They made a point of being fully active in the life of the church. So if Methodists are gonna say that they're open to everybody and that they deplore you know racial prejudice, well let's put it to the test. But you know, over a period of time, it wasn't about putting people to the test anymore. It was about a community just becoming more diverse, where people loved each other with all their strengths and all their faults and all their weaknesses just for who they were. The example that they gave I think that they changed the hearts of many in that little church. In a time when people had all kinds of comments over the civil rights movement, right? If many, if some of you are old enough to remember. Uh, there, was there a diversity of opinion about it at the time? I think they overcame it personally. You know, rubber to the road, feet in place. Let's love. And I believe that that is the standard that Jesus puts before us. For most of us, harsh criticism, judgment, 
is just outside our lane. If we engage in it, it does very little good. Now, I know those of you who are parents, sometimes you have to be pretty harsh in your judgments of your kids when they're doing bad stuff, right? And sometimes when you are, an, if you're an employer or a supervisor, you know, sometimes people need to be shaken up from time to time. Right? We know that there are places, whether you're police or in criminal justice or things like that, where, you know, you need to be in a position, it's your job to be in a position of judgment, confrontation calling people to do what's right, ministering consequences from time to time, hopefully with mercy and justice for the good of the other. But for most of us in our daily life, for most of us in our relations with the world, is any of that helpful to us or is it even our job most of the time? What I can tell you is this, that your job all the time all the time, is to strive to become a more perfect instrument of God in the world, to try to live in a more Christ-like fashion, and especially to take the risk to love, to stand on the side of the oppressed, who, just like you, have faults, to lift up people who are ostracized and give them comfort. You don't have to agree with somebody to put your hand on their shoulder. Our standards are not to decide whether or not someone is a fool. We have higher standards, and yes, we recognize foolishness in our own lives and in the lives of others. Our job is to live in such a way that illustrates how we might love and love well. And to share that manner of living <coughs> with our neighbor. And I know that here in this church, we try to do that. I mean, Lara is going to have an announcement about how our denomination participates in furthering racial harmony in this world. When we think of what Jesus taught and said, he did not seem to be a big fan of the rules and regulations and the standards that kept people kind of bowed down and oppressed and doing you know, things by rote, without understanding, without love, and without compassion. You know, even if they might be good things that were ordained by God, the precepts and the ordinance and the commandments, not that we shouldn't do them, but rather he raises us to a higher standard. To love today where we didn't love yesterday. To show mercy today where we didn't have the ability to do it before. To reach out our hands to somebody that we don't like. To forgive someone again. And to discover that our enemy is our neighbor. And somehow... While working towards justice in the world, we are still obliged to find in them the children of God. So friends, as we encounter in this world harsh and wrong judgments, let us have a care of how we respond to those who are speaking foolishly. Remembering that even this person that you would call a fool, who might be wrong about something, in your opinion, and maybe correctly so, is still a child of God. So therefore, we don't call out people as fools. Rather, we reach out our hearts and try to say, you can do better. And so can I. Let us pray for the grace to serve our neighbors according to their need, as Jesus taught us. And may God bless our reflection on Holy Scripture this morning.
be seated. Uh, joys and testimonies. I don't know if you can speak to this at all, Michael, but our own Andrew Arolo has been involved in the, one of the youth orchestras in New York City. And I understand... New York, New York Youth Orchestra. New York Youth Orchestra and their orchestra, and this was in competition with professional adult orchestras, his orchestra won the classical Grammy right. this year. So in, I think that, you know, I know, isn't that something? Yeah. I know, and so we're so proud of him. I mean, yes, he's going to Juilliard. It wasn't a Juilliard orchestra. You know, yes, he studies math at Columbia, but it wasn't a Columbia orchestra. This was something that he does as a part of playing and uh, participating in musical uh, music in New York uh, on his own, in addition to everything else he does. So uh, as, we, as we think about... Uh, how we want to lift up and further people. We take these amazing successes and we know that not everybody we lift up is going to have exactly the same kind of outcomes, but that when we lift people up, they become finer and more finely tuned instruments of God. Okay, Michael, would you like to say? Uh, I may add something that um, other than Andrew, there are four other uh, members of the orchestra who are part of uh, the New York Youth Symphony, who are now Grammy awardees. So we, uh, uh, so uh, and, and we have other um, very talented young people who choose not to be a member of the, you know, because of scheduling and other things. Like Ina, for example, she could easily be a part of that group, but but everybody has a, has a. But the New York Youth Symphony Orchestra is one of the most elite uh, orchestras uh, in the world right now. And it's very, speaking of standard, it's very high standard, yes. <laughs> and uh, I guess I may, I may put in a little commercial. Uh, today, we have a showcase, which is called Beethoven meets Van Halen. You know? it's, um, <laughs> it's a cross, uh, it's a crisscrossing of musical styles. And uh, we are at the two o'clock in the afternoon. Any one of you, who is uh, preparing to watch the Super Bowl, this is a good prelude, okay? Uh, so we have classical music in the first part, and Ina's gonna be performing, and we have the rock music uh, provided by the touring group of the I School of Music, our neighbor right here. Uh, so it's, um, it's a collaboration of uh, musical uh, you know, styles, speaking of which, like, it's our own way of saying we are diverse. Mm -hmm. right? so, uh, so if you're free, Bring your children, bring your friends, and bring your uh, frenemies. <laughs> Ian, that one, right? <laughs> so thank you so much, Pastor. Okay, thank you, Michael. So, uh, three, three, yeah, three, three, three o'clock. And we remember also the Ministry of Teaching, which, of course, Michael is profoundly engaged in. Um, you know, Maybe God is the maker of the instruments and the crafter of the instruments, but Michael tunes them. So we thank you for the extraordinary ministry because the, the, of the transcendence of the mus young musicians. And, you know, there is, I think, not even a breath's difference between spirituality and art. And we praise and we give thanks for the artistry that they share with the world. Are there other testimonies or joys this morning? Sue, do I have to call you out? Um, it's in the bulletin, so thank you so much. I have a new great-grandson, my son Charles. He's a great member of Seven Charles Group in Rome. He's in Texas, and he's wonderful. Thank you. Are there other joys or celebrations this morning or testimonies? Let us turn to God with our prayers and concerns. Um, I would convey to the congregation the, the, the warm uh, sentiments and wishes of uh, Faye Paquette, who's been in touch with me this week, and uh, you know, who's uh, remembering the community church with, uh, with, with, with great love and reminiscence, um, especially as she goes through this time as her throat cancer progresses and she's not doing so well. So for Faye and for her care and her treatment, we pray to the Lord. Lord uh, we pray in a special way this morning for 
uh, the work of those seeking to bring racial harmony into this world, into our culture and into our society. Hard work, challenging work, work that raises, uh, you, you know, what could be the worst in us and what is often the best in us. We pray that the Spirit of God will come upon us, that we will recognize our neighbor, all our neighbors, as children of God and in our Father and being siblings, that we have a radical equality for their work and for the work that we all do in what, what ways we have. We pray to the Lord. Lord Are there other prayers this morning? Yes, Lauren. Prayers for the people of Turkey and Syria. Thank you. Almighty God, we remember all of the people who are mourning the death of loved ones. We remember those who are displaced and made homeless. And there are so many. Remember the hearts of people who have lost what seems now to be everything. We pray for the government of Turkey, its charitable institutions, its local organizations, as they prepare to dig out, rebuild, and tend to the, those in need. We pray also for the blessings of the international community in times like this that are so much greater than one nation can bear alone. We pray that the spirit of the one living God will reach all people through all ways of thinking, through all manners of religion, to come to the aid of those in need. We pray to the Lord. Are there other prayers this morning? We pray for our own nation, our own local communities and families, and our own friendship groups. That we will always remember that even in the midst of acrimony, our neighbor, compatriot, co-worker, family member, or friend is much more than their opinion or their position. But we are bound together as children of God. And so we pray to be instruments of God's peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who are listed in our bulletin. We call to mind the prayers that we have promised others. As we seek our God in silence, as the Holy Spirit stirs up prayer within us, we remember all the prayers that are secret or private. And for the words that will form as our hearts yearn for God. And so we seek in the silence our God together in this fellowship of faith.
seeking unity with our neighbor, and humbled by the blessed assurance of God's mercy and power to save us, we are bold to pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Good morning, everybody. Um, next Sunday is Shrove Sunday. So I let you go online and read all about it. I won't explain it to you now. In lieu of pancakes, the traditional Shrove Sunday fair, we shall be serving bagels. They are still round, all right? So, um, and on a more somber note, the UCC is taking up a collection for the earthquake victims in Syria and in um, Turkey. So next week in your um, offering, you can write or bring in a, another check and write UCC um, earthquake relief, and we will make certain that it goes to that purpose. And now on the subject of our mission, Lara Richardson has something to say to everybody. Thank you, one and all. Hi. Um, so I hope everybody has the opportunity to read those of us that are here in church the back of the bulletin, um, because I think it's it's uh, 
very interesting and um, talks about how it's science and technology Sunday and how uh, science and religion, they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, and also that it's Racial Justice Sunday is a good time for me to just mention that uh, here at the UC of C, just like it says on the back, we're a thinking, thoughtful uh, church, and um, we believe in not changing history and educating and telling the truth. And um, so in the back, I have put together a bulletin about the missions that we uh, contribute to that help um, minority communities that are really hit the hardest, um, such as Rainbow, Rail Ro Rainbow Railroad, um, Alley Forne, Cal and Lord, Erase Racism, um, but we really wanted to, because we're a small church, try to target uh, our money to go towards really those that are the hardest hit by racial um, discrimination and systemic racism. So what I've done is just put on the board there their website so that people here in the church can, can uh, go online and read more about what these organizations do. And uh, I know I'm proud of being a UCC uh, congregant and all of the, I'm proud of all the good work that, uh, that we do here to uh, address the you know, try to make a difference to face the hate because that's not, um, you know, pastor really, your sermon was touched on this already. So I don't, you know, I'm very pleased to be a member of this church and all of uh, the good work that we do and where we're contributing is making a difference. I also just want to make everyone aware that we do get thank you notes and I hang those, uh, and Robert is helpful too with hanging those on the bulletin and um, he's also helpful with the, he's going to add something to the missions bulletin about Rosa Parks back there uh, because I ran out of printer ink, so I do apologize for that one. <laughs> okay, I'm done, thanks. Well, thank you, Laura. thank you for your hard work. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, uh, this, uh, th by the way, for those board members, we changed Wednesday to Thursday, so that's the uh, that's the that's our board meeting coming th coming up this week. Um, and also, Bible studies has changed to Thursdays, except when we have a board meeting. Um, and then during Lent on Wednesday evenings, there will be Zoom movies, uh, movie clips actually, and, and talking about some of the spiritual aspects of uh, of the movie clips that we're having. Um, so that will be on Zoom, and if people are zealous and want to come here and, and gather in church on Wednesday evening, I'll set up a projector and we can, do, we can, we can sit together and do it, but otherwise it'll be on Zoom. So that, that'll be coming up uh, during Lent, and uh, remember Ash Wednesday, we'll be having an evening service. So watch your email for the details, and God bless everyone this evening, or this, excuse me, bless everyone today.